Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. The Modern Trog In the sprawling suburbs of Portland, nestled amid rolling hills and ancient towering pines, a new development cut into the earth to make way for luxury homes. The land, steeped in history and lush with foliage, had always been a source of local legend. Tales of shadows moving in the woods and strange echoing calls at night that didn't quite sound human. Ethan, a young engineer recently relocated from the bustle of San Francisco, purchased one of the homes attracted by the isolation and natural beauty surrounding the area. He loved the sense of peace that the dense forest provided, the solitude a stark contrast to his previous city life. And one evening, while exploring the woods behind his house, Ethan stumbled upon a series of small caves hidden among the underbrush, their entrances half covered by moss and old, twisted roots. Curiosity peaked. He returned the next day with a flashlight and gear to explore. The caves were shallow, but as he delved deeper into the network, he found evidence of recent habitation, crudely made tools, remnants of a fire pit, and drawings etched into the cave walls, depicting various animals and distorted human-like figures. Intrigued and slightly unnerved, Ethan researched the land's history and discovered that it had once been the site of an ancient settlement, possibly dating back thousands of years. Local archives mentioned the troglodytes, cave dwellers who were said to have lived in the area long before modern civilization. The articles hinted at their sudden disappearance, which added an eerie mystique to Ethan's discovery. Determined to learn more, Ethan set up cameras around the entrances to the caves, hoping to catch wildlife footage, or perhaps more clues about who or what might be using the caves. Each night, he reviewed the footage, his excitement growing as he caught glimpses of a figure moving in and out of the caves. It was swift and adept at avoiding full capture on the cameras, always seeming to know exactly where to move to stay mostly hidden. Then, one night, the figure stopped abruptly in front of a camera, looking directly into the lens. Its features were stark and terrifying, more human than animal but distorted, with hollow eyes and a gaunt face, its skin pale and seemingly luminescent in the dim light of the camera. It stared motionlessly for several heart-stopping moments before disappearing back into the darkness of the woods. After that night, strange occurrences began around Ethan's home. Objects would be misplaced, and he'd hear tapping on the windows and walls in the dead of night. One morning, he found his back door wide open, muddy footprints leading from the forest, through his living room, and back out again. Fearful, yet fascinated, Ethan decided he needed to confront whatever was living in the caves. One late afternoon, armed with more than just a flashlight this time, a camera strapped to his chest and a knife at his belt, he ventured back into the woods. As he approached the cave, the air grew inexplicably colder, and an unnerving silence enveloped the area. Usually alive with the sounds of wildlife, the forest now lay silent, as if holding its breath. Ethan's own breaths seemed loud in his ears as he reached the cave's entrance. He shone his flashlight inside, the beam cutting through the darkness to reveal the shadowed recesses of the cave. He stepped inside, his camera recording, when suddenly a sharp, echoing click sounded from deeper within. Ethan froze, listening. The clicking grew louder, more insistent. It was then he realized the sound was not random. It was a pattern, almost like communication. Heart racing, Ethan moved deeper into the cave, the walls closing in around him as he followed the sound. His light flickered, casting surreal shadows against the ancient rock, each step taking him further from the safety of the outside world and deeper into the unknown. As he rounded a bend, the floor of the cave dipped, opening into a larger chamber. The clicking was deafening now, reverberating off the walls. Ethan swept the room with his flashlight, and for a fleeting moment, he caught sight of movement, the same pale, distorted figure he'd seen on his camera footage. But it was not alone. The chamber was filled with them, their eyes reflecting the light of his flashlight like animals caught in headlights. They moved eerily silent, encircling him, their clicking a chilling symphony in the dark. Frozen in fear, Ethan realized he had found the modern descendants of the ancient troglodytes. Not gone, but evolved, living in the shadows just beyond human sight. 
As they drew closer, their intentions unclear, Ethan knew that his curiosity had led him to a discovery that might not allow for his return. The story of the troglodytes was far from over, and Ethan was about to become a part of their hidden world. As the circle of pale figures tightened around him, Ethan's mind raced for solutions. Each click and soft whisper from the troglodytes bore into his ears, the cacophony building a palpable tension in the air. He kept the flashlight trained on them, the beam flickering as his hand shook. The creatures seemed to recoil slightly from the light, their skin shimmering with a sickly luminescence that gave them an otherworldly appearance. In a desperate bid to communicate, Ethan spoke, his voice echoing strangely in the chamber. I'm not here to harm you, he said slowly, deliberately. The clicking paused, and a hush fell over the group. One of the creatures stepped forward, slightly taller than the others, with piercing eyes that seemed to bore into Ethan's very soul. This leader, or what Ethan assumed to be a leader, tilted its head examining him. It then clicked rapidly, a sound that had a clear rhythm and structure, much like a language. Ethan, remembering the recorder in his pocket, slowly moved his hand to turn it on, hoping to capture the sounds for later analysis, if he made it out. The leader's gaze intensified, and then, to Ethan's astonishment, it spoke, the words rough and halting. Why come here? it asked, its voice a whispery echo of Ethan's. Ethan took a deep breath, trying to mask his fear. I wanted to learn, to understand, he replied, his voice steady despite his pounding heart. The creature paused, then clicked softly to the others, who gradually backed away, giving Ethan a little more space. The leader continued to watch him, its eyes narrowing. Learn dangerous, it said cryptically. Ethan realized that these creatures, these descendants of ancient cave dwellers, had likely lived in isolation for centuries, hidden from the world above, their existence a closely guarded secret. Intrusion into their domain was not merely an inconvenience, it was a threat to their very way of life. As this understanding dawned on him, the leader gestured for Ethan to follow. With a mix of trepidation and curiosity, he complied, walking deeper into the cave system. The troglodytes moved with agility, their bodies adapted to the dark, cramped conditions. The leader led him through narrow, twisting passages that opened into another, even larger chamber. This room was filled with artifacts, tools, clothing, and other remnants of their underground existence. The leader pointed to these items, then at Ethan, its message clear. They survived, they adapted, and they thrived, all without the interference of the outside world. Ethan's camera captured everything, the lens a silent witness to a civilization unseen by the surface world. His heart raced with the realization that he was documenting a monumental discovery, yet the weight of responsibility bore down on him. How could he protect these people and their secrecy once he left the cave? As these thoughts swirled through his mind, a sudden rumbling echoed through the chamber. The ground beneath their feet vibrated, dust falling from the ceiling. The troglodytes clicked in alarm, their eyes darting towards the narrow passages that led back to the surface. The outside, it changes, the leader explained, its voice urgent, not safe. Ethan felt the ground shake again, stronger this time. An unspoken decision hung in the air, he could not leave now, not with the cave possibly collapsing, and not with his presence potentially exposing them to the world above. As they ushered him further into the depths of their domain, away from the increasingly unstable entrance, Ethan realized that his journey into the unknown had just begun. The story of the troglodytes was far from over, and his role in it was yet to be determined. Led by the troglodyte leader, Ethan and the group descended deeper into the earth through a series of convoluted tunnels that seemed to spiral endlessly downward. The further they went, the more Ethan felt the oppressive weight of the earth above him. The air grew denser, colder, and damper, and the flickering light from his dying flashlight struggled against the overwhelming darkness. The rumbling from above grew sporadic, distant thuds that resonated through the rock. Ethan's thoughts raced. Were the caves collapsing? Was the world above them undergoing some catastrophic change? The troglodytes moved with a sense of urgency now, their clicking communications sharp and rapid. After what felt like hours, 
They reached an expansive cavern that took Ethan's breath away. Bioluminescent fungi cast an eerie glow across the vast space, illuminating intricate cave paintings and carvings on the walls that told the history of the troglodyte civilization. Their society was ancient, predating modern humans surviving undetected under the earth. The leader brought Ethan to the center of the cavern where an ancient altar stood. Around it, the other troglodytes gathered, their faces solemn. The leader turned to Ethan, its eyes conveying a depth of sadness. You see us, it whispered, now cannot leave. Ethan's heart sank as the realization hit him. He was never meant to leave this place. His discovery of their hidden world had sealed his fate. The troglodytes couldn't risk exposure, and Ethan knew too much. The ground trembled again, more violently this time, and a deep crack echoed through the cavern. Stones and debris cascaded from the ceiling, and the troglodytes hurriedly motioned Ethan toward a narrow fissure in the wall, previously hidden from sight. It was an escape route, used only in dire emergencies. As they pushed him towards the fissure, the leader's hand gripped his arm. Go, it urged, pushing him into the crevice. Protect. Ethan crawled through the tight, winding path, scraping against rock and mud. Behind him, the sounds of the cavern collapsing grew louder, the screams of the troglodytes echoing in his ears. They were sacrificing their ancient sanctuary to protect their secret, their existence. After an excruciating climb, Ethan emerged into the night air. He was on the other side of the hill, overlooking what remained of the town below. In the distance, he could see emergency lights flashing, Something catastrophic had indeed occurred. Alone, covered in mud and blood, Ethan looked back at the hill, now a collapsed mess of earth and stone. The troglodytes, their history, their entire civilization were buried once again, this time perhaps forever. He had escaped with his life, but at a great cost. The weight of their secret was now his to bear alone, a haunting memory of what lies hidden beneath and the lengths to which the forgotten will go to protect their existence. As he staggered toward the lights of the town, Ethan knew his life would never be the same. He was a man caught between two worlds, the only keeper of a terrifying secret that was meant to stay buried deep underground. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.